Hello, and we're going to start looking at the transport system or the cardiovascular uh, system. Very, very important. There's a nice little heart there. The heart is good to represent things like love and other non existent metaphors. Just kidding. There's love in the world. It's okay. But here we're going to talk about the biological heart, the transport system, what it actually does for us. So we can call it the cardiovascular system. This would be an awesome tattoo. But as you can see from the diagram there, you know, there's a heart in the middle and it's connected to a whole bunch of blood vessels. And uh, they're basically for transporting things around the body, a lot of things. So obviously, um, in this diagram, this very artistic diagram, you can see uh, there's some lungs that are kind of connected to this entire thing up here. So something about picking up oxygen from the lungs and delivering oxygen to the body, that's very important as well. We'll talk about the different things that get transported in blood. So basically, uh, the cardiovascular system consists of blood, a heart to actually pump the blood, and blood vessels to carry it around. Uh, we can separate it into two types of circulations. Pulmonary means uh, to and from the lungs. So when I hear the word pulmonary, I think of lungs. So pulmonary and lungs. Okay, it doesn't sound anything like it, but you won't forget that. And the other is called the systemic circulation, and that is uh, the circulation that's going on from the heart to all the other organs in the body, and also to keep the heart tissue itself alive. The heart is uh, made up of cardiovascular muscles and so that actually requires oxygen and glucose as well too so it kind of has, has to feed uh, itself. More on that when we do an actual heart dissection you'll be able to identify um, those particular uh, vessels and there it is as an actual tattoo don't consider it. So when it comes to the heart it looks pretty complex when you're looking at a real heart sitting in front of you uh, there's tubes coming out from everywhere and a lot of the tubes branch off and so sometimes you can get a little bit overwhelmed when when faced with a diagram of a heart but uh, your goal is to be able to just sketch out the simplest diagram that you can and so here I have it represented as four boxes the heart has four main chambers so if you can draw something like this to start off with then this is what I would always do in any kind of exam. If I, there's something about the heart, it might take a little bit more time to figure it out, to figure out the path that the blood is moving. <sighs> then, as long as you can label all the tubes and all the chambers, everything is okay. I gotta figure out why that screen keeps popping up and I keep forgetting. Um, so what you should do when you're looking at a diagram of the heart, assume if, you're, if it's on your paper that the person is lying on the table facing up, okay? They're dead and lying on the table facing up. So don't get your left and right confused. So the actual right side of the diagram over here is actually going to be the left side of the person's heart if they're lying on the table. So you should get familiar uh, with that orientation. So we start at the bottom left, and well, bottom right for looking at the diagram, but that's called a left ventricle, LV for short. And uh, I've drawn thicker walls in there, and you should start by thinking like that. Um, then you're gonna then then obviously the other side is gonna be the right ventricle. Then you have the left atrium and then the right atrium. So just don't get your left and right mixed up. The flow of the blood uh, follows a path like this. From the left ventricle, the blood is gonna flow around. This is actually going to the rest of the body. We'll mention that in a second. It's gonna come back here. Then the blood's gonna go through and then come back around. So it makes a nice little uh, figure eight. The blood that's coming out of there is very high pressure. So how do I know it's high pressure? Well, for now, I'm just helping you remember things. Uh, the left ventricle here has thick walls to withstand high pressure so we can push all the blood with lots of fresh oxygen uh, to the rest of the parts of the body. Um, so when the blood comes back, when the blood comes back to the heart, it needs to be recharged with more oxygen. So goes out to the body through all the various vessels and when it comes back there's no more oxygen or not much oxygen left so it has to be recharged so when it goes back out from this side guess where it's going to it's going to go to the lungs get reoxygenated and then come back in through the left atrium so this is to the lungs now here's a few other tubes uh, to mention there are two there are a couple pathways and a couple of uh, valves that are going on here we'll talk about that more in, in another diagram but um, this big 
tube, this thick tube that's going to be sticking out here, you can see the top diagram over here, that's called the aorta, so the blood passes through here, it's going through the aorta. When it's coming back in, it's coming through this part called the vena cava, and the vena cava uh, are represented here as well. Uh, when the, go, when it, the blood goes to the lungs, it's going to be passing through the pulmonary artery. I'll tell you more about the words artery and vein uh, in a little bit. But pulmonary artery, ar artery, sorry, when it comes back, it's coming through the pulmonary vein. Remember, pulmonary sounds like lungs. So if this has to do with lungs, pulmonary artery, and then pulmonary vein, bringing it back into the heart. There are two valves here called the atrioventricular valves. It's not too hard to remember because these are the atria, these are the ventricles. So the valves that are in between them are called the atrial ventricular valves. And they help keeping the they help to keep the blood flowing in one they help to keep the blood flowing in one direction so it doesn't go back. Okay? You wouldn't want that to happen. No comment. Out here there are two additional valves called semilunar valves that will prevent backflow as well. And in this diagram, you can see uh, they are here. Here are the atrial ventricular valves. And as the blood pumps, there's all kinds of animations online for this and in various iPhone and iPad apps. So we'll be looking at those as well. So you can see, imagine the blood goes <sighs> when it goes through like this. Uh, it, these flaps will open one way, but they won't open the other way. So pretty clever, pretty clever. Um, couple other names for the atrial ventricular valves. You can write that down if you want, but uh, I would stick with atrial ventricular valves. It helps to distinguish between the atrial ventricular valves on the left side of the heart and on the right side of the heart. Okay. One way flow, two circulations. One is pulmonary, the other is systemic. We mentioned earlier, the heart is a double pump, you could say. Okay. Here's another diagram like this. See if you can pause the video and try to point out as many of the things as you can. Go back if you need to, but I'm about to unleash all the labels. So pause the video and see what you can name here with your friends. Okay, so here are some of the labels for you to check out. See how many you got right. This will require a little bit of 3D investigation with the real heart to figure out how this works. But if you can see, so you have to draw valves behind things and everything like that. So try to use your imagination to see when the art, when the when the blood is here in the left ventricle, uh, when it gets pumped out, it's gonna it's gonna go down this path. I should draw an arrow going down like this and then back up, and it's gonna come out the heart over here. So uh, let's see if we can do that really quick. So the flow of the blood is really important going to come back out here and we're going to you're going to see this in all kinds of practice diagrams as well okay when this comes back okay the heartbeat the heart is special because it can beat uh, on its own it can beat on its own without any special stimulation um, so we call the heart tissue uh, myogenic myogenic means it can contract without a special stimulation from a nerve and this contraction kind of spreads. Uh, so from the main point, which, which is this place called the pacemaker, the pacemaker uh, is basically referring to a small group of cells located in the wall of the right atrium. So in this diagram, they're showing it around here. Okay, and then you get uh, contractions being spread around the heart. But the pace, the speed, you know that your heart can start pumping faster or can slow down. Uh, it can still be controlled by other things like hormones and your brain sending uh, messages through nerve cells as well. So it can respond to nerves, uh, nerves, nerve signals, and also from various hormones, especially adrenaline. As you know, it's part of the, uh, you've heard of the fight or flight response. This has happened to me a few times where I've been in situations where I've either had to fight or run and my heart would start beating faster and of course, I take the right path out of that situation and I'd always run away. Like I'm running away from this message that keeps popping up. Okay. Finally, a little bit about blood vessels. There's a lot of information here, so uh, take your time, put it in your own words, simplify it uh, if you want. Um, basically, before I 
give you some of the stuff here. Blood vessels, uh, you've heard of arteries and veins, and then maybe capillaries as well. You need to know all three. The tip for remembering the difference between them is that arteries will carry blood away from the heart. Arteries away, AA. And veins will carry blood towards, towards the heart, right? Veins towards, veins towards the heart, arteries away from the heart. Uh, so each one of these vessels, each one of these vessels, if we're talking about the arteries or the, or the veins or the capillaries, which are the really tiny, thin ones, when you get a paper cut and you see a little bit of red, it's because you're, you've cut these tiny uh, little vessels. If you cut an artery, you'll know because a lot of blood will be spraying out of your body. It's going to be a horrible situation. Primarily, we're talking about here, here. I saw a movie once where people were in a, uh, doing like knife fights and uh, they were being trained that the quickest way to disable your enemy is to try and uh, sever their major arteries. And I think you've seen, you've probably seen enough movies to know what I'm talking about. All right. So these are the three different layers. Here's a diagram on the left that you can refer to. Basically, the innermost layer is just a single layer of cells, uh, really thin, low friction, low friction, of course, because you want, you don't want things to clog up. Of course, we can do things to our body that can make uh, this, the, these actual uh, pathways clog up. But for the most part, they're designed in such a way to allow things to move through pretty quickly. And uh, red blood cells are not going to get caught, hopefully, unless there's other things, other diseases, sickle cell anemia or you have some other blockages due to uh, fat buildup. The middle layer is called the tunica uh, media, and then the outer layer is called the tunica adventitia. Media, as you can remember, sounds like middle, middle. Uh, the tuna, tunica intima sounds like the, it's the innermost layer, it's the most intimate. If you're in here, this is the most intimate setting. And then on the outside is the adventitia. I'm sure there's better reasons for why they're named this, but for me, for me right now, Intimate layer, media sounds like middle, and if you go really far out, you're going on an adventure, adventitia layer. So uh, there's various uh, structures here that are related to their function. We're going to go into them in a little more detail, but make sure uh, you get that down. Okay, these are the, the lists of the three types of vessels, uh, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Do you remember? Arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. Capillaries are the ones that branch off. So if, if you did a simple pathway, it'd be the blood goes, here's the heart, blood goes through arteries around in the body. Then it goes to the tiny thin capillaries to reach all the, reach every single possible cell that's in your body. And then it's gonna come back through veins and the, the branches are going to get thinner and thicker so it's basically from arteries to arterioles to capillaries back through venules that they get thicker into veins and then reach back and then come in through the uh, vena cava um, if it's coming from the body into the heart so this is going to look like a lot of information but um, just so that we're not leaving out any details but you can check out what's going on here So very briefly, we're looking at arteries here. Arteries, they're going to be pumping blood to the, to the rest of the body. So we already talked about high blood pressures. We don't want things to burst. And large volumes of blood are going to be pumped out. And so you can try to figure out what does that mean for the structure. Capillaries are getting, like I said, they're uh, reaching every single possible cell. Base. So they, they get really, really tiny. These are really thin. Capillaries are actually only so thick as to allow, like these are red blood cells. So it's pretty much a path of single, single red blood cells going down. Um, yeah, and they have to reach, they have to reach everywhere. And then the veins here, veins are relative, they carry relatively low pressure blood. And so there's a problem when there's not a lot of pressure pushing one way and that the blood could actually, uh, go backwards. So there's actually valves uh, built into the veins that actually prevent uh, the blood from going backwards. Okay. So structurally, 
and referring to the three different layers that were mentioned earlier, this is how they are different. So take note and then see if you can see this. This is a recurring theme in biology, uh, how structure is related to function. And we, we're going to see this a lot in uh, the human physiology unit. Things are not just the way they are because somebody's like, well, let's just randomize things. There's a reason for everything. And for some of those things that are confusing, that gives us a hint into our evolutionary past. But for the most part, um, everything that you can identify in the body that seems kind of strange, or why are these walls thicker, why are they thinner, there's a purpose, there's a purpose, uh, there's, uh, there's a function of that that's related to there. I'm going to solve that next. So pause the video and then get down what you need here. Okay, finally, very last ending bit structure of the blood. Blood is considered a liquid tissue. Uh, what kinds of things can you find in the blood? Well, it's mostly water. Um, plasma is kind of a liquidy part of the blood, mainly water, but there's also dissolved things. Uh, urea okay, has to be filtered out. I'm going to talk about that with the kidneys. Hormones um, are being passed through your blood. Oxygen, carbon dioxide is going to be uh, produced by your cells uh, in when you're doing cellular respiration. And so that has to be taken to your lungs so you can breathe that stuff out. Mineral salts, proteins, antibodies, enzymes, all kinds of things are passing through blood. It's just the highway and road system of your whole body. Uh, blood also transports heat, very important. Think about that. When I'm out in the summertime and I look down at my arms, I've got all these blood vessels that are sticking out. That actually helps to bring uh, the heat up closer to the skin so that it can evaporate away faster with sweat. We'll talk about that with homeostasis, but don't forget that blood also transports heat. Erythrocytes is a fancy word for red blood cells. Uh, of all the cells that are being transported in your blood, there you go, 99.8% of them are actually red blood cells or erythrocytes. And you should know from many years ago that that's red blood cells are transporting oxygen. If you're lacking red blood cells, that could be a problem. And there's various causes of that. Uh, the rest of the cells are called leukocytes. There are some other things. We're going to talk about the defense against disease unit. But for the most part, leukocytes is a fancy word for white blood cells, or like I like to call them, the WBCs. You can call these guys the RBCs. Okay, and then the white blood cells uh, can be split into, in general, two categories, but uh, depending on the level that you study this at, it branches off into many, many different types. For now, phagocytes, leukocytes consist of phagocytes, which are kind of like Pac-Man. This is Pac-Man. Phago means to eat, phagocytes, so they're engulfing or eating things. And lymphocytes, we'll learn about this in more detail later. For now, just know that they're part of the... Uh, structure of blood. So lymphocytes will produce antibodies to help fight off disease in a more uh, sophisticated way. We'll learn about that. Okay, I'll leave you with one quick question to look at. This one's super duper easy. Pause the video, uh, check out the answer, and I'll see you in the next one.